Bitcoin smashed an impressive 5,000 bucks in the last 24 hours, up 7% in the entire session, and over the last three days, putting on $10,000, going from 61 to 71,000. It has reached some of the critical targets in the short term to overcome the bears. Now, we've got plenty to get through in today's video, looking at the macro cycles for Bitcoin and the traditional markets. As, as well as the economy and real estate. But the main focus today, we are going to dive headfirst into Bitcoin, discussing the good, the bad, maybe the ugly, a lot of good, a lot of positive vibes here, but also sharing with you some of the stuff that people do not want to talk about. In this stage of the bull market, it's not over yet, but in this stage, a lot of channels that you will see there will only give you positive vibes. They give you positive vibes because the majority of people here in crypto are new to investing. They don't want to hear about the other side of the story. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying they don't want to hear about the other side. We'll get to that in today's video because I want to share with you the most honest data, just the facts from the charts and let you decide what you want to do with your money. So with that in mind, hit that like, subscribe to the channel. It's your home of macro cycle analysis. We are climbing towards 400,000 in 2024. Thanks to your efforts, we're sharing the content with a friend, family, so they can see what is going on in these markets. Links in the top of the video description. We'll get to that in a moment, but anything I'm talking about, you will find there. Let's kick it off with the traditional markets, macro bull market macro cycles at play here with many of the data points suggesting a green 2024. I'm starting off with the macro side of things here, looking at the traditional markets because we have been very bullish on all of the markets for many years now, looking at this being the everything bubble as we head into the mania stage of the markets. We've got a couple of years left, things are going well, and then we'll get into where we see Bitcoin positioned at the moment. But Looking at the winning streaks for the S&P 500, five month win streaks can mean more strength. So the S&P 500 has been up. It's been continuing to grind upon grind upon grind as we've been looking at as uh, it broke through into new all time high prices. I've got a 10% drop here on the chart to visualize what it would look like if the S&P was to drop that far. That would be absolutely crazy, I think, for these markets to do it. Is it impossible? Of course not. We always have to make that disclaimer there for, for some. But I think what is going on is the masses have missed out on many of these low opportunities when we were screaming about them here on the channel. Literally, you may have remembered at these lows. June, the market went slightly lower. But you, now looking back, as I suggested at the time, you wouldn't care when you look back to try and scoop up at the lows and again in the March 2023 low when the banking crisis happened for this grind up. So I bring that up because of the tops as well. When we see those tops come, not today, not tomorrow, not next week or next month or whatever, but it's going to be the same sort of thing that occurs. So this is a bit more of the subjective market sentiment outlook for those peaks. If you are selling into the peaks, it will look like you're an absolute idiot at the time. But when the market does roll over, then you can look back and think, all right, sweet. I was doing the right thing by my plan. I'll get into that a little bit later. But just to show you that physically on a chart, what that looks like at the bottoms, a similar sort of thing often uh, plays out at the tops because you're never going to buy the exact top or sell the exact top and you're never going to buy the exact low. If you have some bad luck, maybe you do buy the exact top. But moving on from that point, this is what we have been anticipating for the stock markets is that continual grind to the upside during these uh, bull markets as they break into new all time highs because the masses and even some of the hedge funds or a lot of the money that's sitting on the sidelines is hoping and waiting for bigger corrections. And it doesn't seem like it'll come at this stage. When you look at these sort of strength streaks, five month winning streaks, they don't typically end the bull market. They usually signal more gains to come. One year later, 93% of the time you get higher prices. So essentially this is the buy the dip opportunity. How far is that dip? For the S&P, it suggests single digits. I'm trying to paint the picture here based on the data that we're still in that macro bull market. Trends are still up. It's a buy the dip opportunity here. 
It's the party time. It's the go stage into the end. Should we get another green month for the S&P 500 for the, uh, well, yeah, the S&P 500 here looking at the election years as we've got an election coming up at the end of this, end of this year, you typically see some sort of sideways grind. It doesn't mean it has to happen. You can see here for the STA aggregate cycle that it still was a grinding move up into May, small pullback here, and then it continued up throughout the rest of the year with a couple of months uh, leading into the election. As you can see here, November period, you still had that bit of a pause, bit of a pullback there for those next few months over uh, summer into autumn, obviously winter into spring for us down here. Some of the potential pause areas for the market that may have a more pronounced effect on Bitcoin, which could pause those prices as well. At the moment, everything is still pretty well up and pretty well rosy. History says a green 2024 is likely, something that we've had a look at as well. S&P index return. So two years before, basically your uh, 2022 was down, the next year was up. What happens the following year? Typically it's an up year. So you have a down year, an up year. You typically don't get another down year being 2024. The data suggests it is more than likely going to be another up year, which is of course fantastic for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as well. Another big piece of data, looking at here, this uh, cycling from an extreme loss to an extreme gain is highly unusual. So we've seen the extreme losses, that was through 2022, just according to the way this is pronounced here. Uh, you've got the 20% drop in 2022, put in a higher low, mind you, good areas to be buying. And then this is cycled up into uh, extreme gains. I'm just looking at these times when it happened, this was in 1990, 1991. That was in the recession. We had the pullback, very minor there. And then the market took off from that point. You had the GFC, so the global financial crisis, 2000 peak in 2007, the collapse in 2008, the bottom in 2009, early 2009. There is your signal again, the market takes off, big move. The COVID pandemic, big losses, big wins, the market takes off. Then we had 2022, there wasn't a recession. So each of these other times you had a recession here, recession here, recession here. Technically, there was a recession. The definition obviously has changed. And so what I think is happening here, this is throwing in my own thoughts. Everyone, well, a lot of people have been caught up with the fact that they are waiting for the recession to be announced. There was more than likely a contraction of sorts. You've seen it, you've talked about it. We've got a technical recession and they're still waiting for the announcement of recession. Meanwhile, the market has taken off without them. So it's really important just to focus on the charts and don't worry about what the news is saying or what you're expecting or what those analysts are trying to tell you that is coming, this looming recession, this nonsense that continues on. Just follow the charts and the charts will lead you in the right direction. So far, that direction is up as we have looked at here, that continued grinding effect. Now, this chart is the Home Builders ETF. Even more gains here. Essentially, we're looking at does the market believe there is going to be more profits for the home builders? They're saying yes. This has just continued up uh, for coming up to two years now. So you had the June 2022 bottom. It had a higher low compared to the S&P, which means it is stronger than the S&P. And so far, those gains have showed that. So you've got bigger gains out of the Home Builders ETF, at least for now. This is gonna be a key chart that we follow leading into the peak of the real estate cycle as it had a, um, a forewarning for the collapse. The, it peaked in 2006, that's the amount of data that we have here for the Home Builders ETF. Put in a higher low in early 2007, it started to collapse in 2007, and then put in another higher low and bottomed out at the same time that the stock market bottomed out. So the stock market was topping out in October, so roughly around here, but this was already on a very significant downtrend. So this is gonna be a big one to watch to let you know when that recession is coming. Forget these idiots looking at all sorts of other data, and I say idiots pretty strongly here, but that's directed to the folks who continue to call recession year after year. I need to get back to the objective data. That data is a fact from the chart. It was dropping in lower highs and lower lows while the stock market was still going up. We're here on a monthly chart. We'll continue to watch this to see how this progresses into the peak 
of the real estate cycle in 2025, 2026, somewhere around there. Don't have an exact date yet. Let's just watch the charts to see what progresses from the, uh, from the markets at this point. After that, we are still anticipating a pretty severe correction. Good times, positive vibes, bring it all together now. It's going to be fantastic. There are gains to be had. It's not a time, I think at least, to be scared based on what we have seen from the charts already. The other piece here for the economy, two economic indicators that work best together. This one's looking at heavy truck sales and housing permits. They've both been on the uptick. And as uh, the author suggests, when these are in lockstep, pretty well, the economy is doing well. It's good times, it's positive vibes, trends are up, charts are saying that, the data is suggesting further upside here. Extreme greed is at 81. So we've got an extreme greed reading, 81. The greed's at 75, as we've looked at before. These extreme greed readings can remain elevated for a considerable amount of time. Previous cycle here, November, December, January, February, we had a reading 80 and above with a few little wipeouts here, still putting in higher low prices. So we could get a wipeout of the market sentiment, basically dropping below 60, below 50, touching the 40s perhaps, but still remain bullish. So still putting in higher lows and higher highs. Bitcoin's broken above $69,000, putting in a daily close. We obviously need to see what happens at the end of this week and the end of the month, which is on Sunday. So it's going to have a monthly and weekly close, if I'm not mistaken, on the same day come Monday of next week. So some big things coming up this week for the Bitcoin price. Daily has got a check mark so far. We've got one daily close above 69. Weekly, you'd want to see that at least above 69. I've got my indicator here at 72 and a half K. Reason for that is pretty significant down bar that occurred on the 15th of March. Increased volume compared to what it had seen previously over this period. Of course, this one here was larger, but it was the, the largest one there. Should price get above that and start to close? Well, it's not far from the all time high. So no, um, no rewards there or prizes for saying, well, it's going to probably hit a new all-time high when it hits that. But for me, that level is a roughly change in trend because of what had been happening on the way up. Basically, it wasn't too many days of big red bars down until we got to this day, which was the start of the three days down, which has caused this particular correction so far. Let's see how it progresses from the low. So the main thing I wanna look at here is do we get that third day up in a row? Michael has done a very good summary of this on his video today. A link to his channels in my video description. Just back to BTC now for the short term. That's my target there, 69,000, closes above those swing tops. We got that on the daily, weekly again, and then of course the monthly as well, because that was the previous old all-time high. So 69K over the coming week is gonna be vitally important for Bitcoin in order to then tackle that new all-time high. We were talking about the daily counts to get into that new all-time high. We missed the eight day, so that was the quickest period in history that it got from uh, that signal, the three days down to a new all-time high. But we're getting very close now to that 13 days, which was from March of 2023, February into March, 2023 before it had another fall into the banking crisis and then took off again. Out of that low, you can see we had green, 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 so three days in a row, and we did not go back to visit that particular price. So another fantastic signal out of that low point. If you were around in 2023, every time this came down, it was on with the bears. It had to reach 20K, 15K, 10K. They were so wrong, it's unbelievable. A lot of them have missed out on this big move to the upside and now we continue to get this grind up. So I've looked at the short term, the daily, the weekly, what it needs to do over the coming uh, six days. Click it over to the weekly here. We've got five days, 23, six days to go. And then of course, over the monthly as well, which also has six days to go. Those closes above 69 are going to be golden for it. But here comes the thoughts on what nobody else is talking about. The amount of of time that we've had to this upside, this extensive move. One, two, three, four, five, six bars here in the swing, because we had the low here. And then if you want to count the seven green bars, so the seven months to the upside from the low in September as well. This is 
unprecedented for Bitcoin to continue on with the move according to what we have seen in the past. I've got a better chart over here. We got seven green months in a row. It's only happened once before. We take it all the way back to 2012. There were seven months there and then it went sideways and paused. We had six months green, sideways and paused for about four to five months, put on that nice final blow off top. And so I think I've come up with something why people are so triggered at the idea of the price stopping here or a potential intermediate top. I think the main thing that people refer to, if that's the case, is that they might think that the price has to correct from there. That is entirely untrue. Just because there is a top in the market, it doesn't mean it needs to correct substantially. That's what we've seen in the past. So we've got a top come in, the price went sideways through here in 2022, and then put in a new fresh high. There was barely a correction in it. If we took it from the top to the bottom of the red bar, 36%. Remember at the time, Bitcoin was only trading single digits here, nine bucks up to 15 bucks. So that's not a very uh, big correction considering the liquidity in the market. But if you, if you just wanna look at the red month itself, just 25%. We've seen Bitcoin do 20 and 22% already in this cycle. So that was the sideways grind on a monthly chart here from the big peak out here in August 20, uh, 2012, sideways grind, and then it took off again. Had another peak here in April, dropped off a fair bit, sideways grind, and then it peaked again for November, December. So according to history, Bitcoin has done seven months green once. This could be its second time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should we get a close above the open, which was 61,100 over the next six days? So this could be the second time in history that Bitcoin does seven green months. I don't think many people are disputing that this is probably going to be a green month. Going for an eighth month, however, this would be the first time in history that Bitcoin would do eight months green to the upside and then continue powering on from that point. It's not impossible, but we're just looking at the probabilities here based on the facts from the charts. So I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade here, but in terms of a, a pause at higher prices, absolutely okay. That might even be the pressure that destroys a lot of these bears, just hoping and waiting for much bigger downside. It doesn't happen. Like what's happened in the past, you just get these grinding sideways moves. You can see the price just basically grind sideways, barely put in a correction, and then it takes off to the next stage and puts in another grinding sideways, takes off to the next move. And if that is the case, that's obviously going to destroy the hearts of the bears, hoping for more than 20, 25% uh, corrections, saying that it has to happen this time, which then puts that flip into the market where they would have to get in at higher prices, causing the price to continue to soar from here. The other thing to note is the March, April turn. What we've seen in the past are plenty of turns around that March, April period. You got March back here, 2017. We had April move this out of the way, you got April to that peak in 2021. We've also got turns in June. You got turn here in June, turn here in June. Uh, we can go back to the previous cycles. You've got uh, April again, the sideways grind, and then a peak into November. So the market, oh, and then we got a June here as well before that sub significant crash in the early days. Then you've got the tops generally coming in around November, December. So there are a few things pointing towards this period being at least a temporary pause in the trend. The trend can't just continue powering on forever. If it does, that is a weaker market because essentially you need the strength to build up in the market for it to push on to higher prices. And so as I continue to talk about things that I don't think many are saying, this is the same deal that happens at the tops. The masses of people, they want the newbies. They want to hear all the positive vibes going on all the time. Don't worry about anything. The ETFs are here. This time's different. The halving's coming up. How could it possibly go down? How could it possibly stop? It just has to keep powering on. The ETFs are buying. This sort of nonsense. Remember, the ETFs aren't buying. It's the people who are buying in the ETFs. They can also sell. It's such a stupid thing to think about that it can only ever go up. I'm happy that it goes up because obviously I'm very heavily invested from those lows because that's the time that we were seeing those bottoms come in. Talking about the current pricing and the possibilities of what happens next, as we've alluded to in the 
uh, intro here with this, the traditional markets, it is likely that we'll see further upside and this continued grind. There is also the possibility that we go through a bit of a consolidation, even if the price doesn't correct very far. That's something to keep in mind, especially over this period of the April-May uh, effect in the market, even uh, well, especially after we've gone up for seven months in a row and six months on our swing chart. So let's have a look at our swing chart here to the upside six months. We've covered that before on many of the uh, videos where we see six months up and then a turning point in the market. Doesn't mean it has to come down severely. It's not uncommon for the market just to run out of steam for the time being after that six to seven month period, which is precisely what we're in and precisely in this period here in March, April. So by no means am I calling for a massive collapse. Just continue to follow the charts, especially as we lead into the end of this week and the end of the month close, which is the, also the end of the quarter close. Should that be the case, as we've also talked about here, these are basically buy the dip opportunities. That's what the market has been showing here for many, many weeks as it's been a very big bull market. I want to just mention it here that most don't want to hear it through this whole period. Sometimes the tops take a month, a week. Sometimes they take three months like we saw in 2021. No one wanted to hear that the market is topping at, those, at this stage because it just kept grinding higher. Should we go into something like this now where we break the, the top and then put in a high high, correct, put another high high, correct, put another high high, correct more substantially, and then start to put in these lower highs? It's going to be very loud for the, the bulls and they won't be able to see the signals for what they are. And my point of view, I'm looking at things from more of a macro perspective. So I'm looking at things on weekly and monthly charts as opposed to day-to-day -day ups and downs. That's not how I, I trade or invest. I'm over a longer time frame, the weeks to months. And so if you are starting to see something like this play out, it can take months for it to occur. In the meantime, there's still going to be opportunities. So bring in those positive vibes. I think there's still some fantastic trading opportunities as our traders have been doing here with TIA Premium. This is not stopping the trading whatsoever. Uh, Ronan, great trades here on Sol, putting in very significant gains here while Bitcoin has basically been trading in a range between 60 and 70K, putting in some great gains. Well done to Ricardo, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know what I'm talking about here, getting into the trades. However, that can be a process that takes time. And should we see it, usually as it starts to collapse past those previous lows, this is the time when everyone says, why didn't you warn me? Why didn't you tell me? And if you start to see something like this, especially after the breakout, that is, a, that is telling you that the market is getting ready to have some time off. Doesn't mean it's the end. It's just getting ready to have some time off. So I guess I wanted to bring that up at this stage of the market. Should we see it break through here? We could go on and start to test some higher prices. Now I've talked about those prices as well. I've got some targets here, 78,500, 87,000 and 96,000 based on some extensions, which I'll get into in future videos. But should we break through, the first thing I wanna look at here is $78,500 if we get through this top. Stay tuned, like, subscribe. I hope that's helped you out at this stage. It's not the worst news in the world to get some sort of pause in the market at least, but generally the way I look at these tops is that they can take some time. This one here took basically a month to occur. This one here took about three months to occur. And it's not until the market really breaks down substantially that people then say, why didn't anyone say this? That's what happens every single time. Why didn't someone say it? Let's have a look how this market progresses from here. Thanks again. I'll see you at the next video. Stay tuned. Keep the positive vibes rolling on and I'll see you at the next one. Till then, take care. Peace out.